Hello and welcome back to Metal Machine Shop. This is part 3 of my Mark II tilting trike design and build project. In the first two videos I started off by describing the design of the project and then cracked on with making the tilting arms. You can go back and watch those later if you're interested. This time I'm going to be making a start on the frame which forms the backbone of the trike. The frame is mostly made from thin wall steel tubing. This is a CAD model of the frame. It's a fairly simple triangulated welded structure. In some areas the CAD model is slightly simplified and I'm going to be making up some of the details as I go along with the project. On the front section of the frame, these tabs form the mountings for the swinging arms. This part here is the steering bell crank, and I'm probably going to be making a start on this in a later video. Moving to the top of the frame, we find the bottom bracket, or I guess you could call it the top bracket. This is actually going to be adjustable to suit different rider leg lengths. Although the CAD model doesn't show this, we'll see this later on when we get on in the video. The top tube meets the bottom tube, or would you call it the down tube? I don't really know. Somewhere halfway along the bottom tube. At the rear end of the frame, we have the pivot point for the swinging arm. These are the tubes I ordered straight out of the box. We saw these last time, but some of the frame tubes are in the box as well. Getting started with the frame, the first job is to find a suitable baseboard. So I bought a piece of chipboard attic flooring from B&Q. The shape of the frame is marked out very carefully and accurately on the chipboard. I glued plywood blocks to the baseboard to hold the framing components accurately in place. With the baseboard prepared, I can start making the components out of the tubing. The bottom tube has a slight kink in it, so it's cut at an angle with the bandsaw. The angle of the bandsaw is set accurately with a protractor. The tubes were dressed with a file in way of the joint, and the two ends came together quite nicely. I don't have a tube notcher, so I set up this fairly elaborate setup on the lathe so that I could notch the tubes with hole saws. We saw some of this in the previous video for the tilting arms. By holding a piece of the same tube in the three jaw chuck, I was able to set the correct height on the workpiece to ensure that the notch was in precisely the right place. The end of the top tube has a slot cut in it and will be clamped to allow for the adjustment of the pedals. A hole at the end of the slot provides a stress reliever, and this is drilled first.
The slot is cut with a slitting saw. The next job was to make the tabs that form the mounting points for the tilting arms. I ordered some steel plate for this and when the plate arrived I looked at it for a while and thought, you know what, this is going to be a lot of work and I really can't be bothered. So I went online and found a laser cutting company and ordered the whole lot to be done. The completed parts came back within a couple of days and saved me a huge amount of effort. Most of the cost in the laser cutting is actually setting up the machines and once you've done that the cost of the individual components is really just a few pence each so I got a whole load of spares made just in case I wanted to make another model. We saw some of these parts in the previous video and they were used for the tilting arms. These parts are the tabs for the lower swinging arms and the whole shape in the middle will fit neatly over the bottom tube. The left and right tabs are held together by the piece at the bottom that my thumbs are holding. And once the tabs are welded in place, this bit will be ground away. The bottom and top tabs were a really close, precise fit over the tube. I was actually really pleased by how accurate the parts were, much better than I was expecting. At this point the frame components are mostly complete. I'm just laying everything out to check how good the fit is. This is the bottom bracket and it's going to be welded to this tube. The tube is a sliding fit in the top tube and this is how the pedal position is adjusted. The sliding tube will be notched to fit closely on the bottom bracket of course. Having got to this stage, the major frame components are now ready to be welded together. As you may remember from my last video, I wasn't particularly pleased with the results I was getting from my MIG welder. That's down to me, not the welder. I need to do a lot more practice before I can achieve satisfactory standards. However, quite a few people commented that I needed to buy myself a proper inverter TIG welder. And I've been thinking about this, so... I haven't made up my mind yet, but I'm going to leave the welding until I have decided whether to go with a TIG welder or just to improve my MIG welding standards. Either way, it's going to take a lot of practice to be good at TIG welding, so I'm going to think about it and leave the frame components to one side until I've made my mind up. In the meantime, I've been working on the swing arm, and that's going to be the subject for the next video, but here's a sneak peek of it. Thanks for watching, I hope you found the video interesting. As ever, please don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel and leave comments down below. I do try to answer all the comments. See you next time.